Here we are 25 years later on the fifth entry and I gotta tell you with this one it kept me on my toes pretty much the entire time. No one's safe and literally everybody is a suspect. But to answer the question of whether or not it is worth the wait, worth the decade that we had in between, we're gonna break it down into bits because when you have 10 years between a movie and the last one, you gotta think, okay, they spent 10 years, they wanna tell the story right, they gotta have a good ass reason to bring back some legacy characters and they gotta have a reason to wanna keep the franchise going. So first we're gonna talk about the characters, the new victim pool in Scream 5 or 2022. I like these victims, I like them a lot. Even the ones that were kind of bitchy, I like them. I like the callbacks, I like what they have to do with the legacy characters in this movie. Not exactly their interactions with the legacy characters, but the way they interweave themselves into the history of Woodsboro. I like how it feels like it matters. It's not exactly a completely random pool of characters, but at the same time, they all have their own identity enough that it matters who they are, not just what they are attached to in terms of the legacy. So for the legacy characters, Gail, Dewey, Sydney, those are the ones we know are coming back in terms of the trailer. The reason I'm being ambiguous is because I'm avoiding any kind of spoilers, but for those three characters, was it worth bringing them back? Eh, honestly, I don't think this one needed it. I really don't. I think this movie could have benefited from not having Sydney, Dewey, and Gale in it. This cast, to me, was strong enough on its own. The story itself actually kind of was fine on its own. These legacy characters, they were, they were brought in for this requel, as they talk about in this movie. I, it, it wasn't integral. To me, it wasn't integral. It felt actually like these legacy characters were kind of tacked on, like, okay, we have to attach them. We have to. We have to latch them onto this Scream movie because if we don't, no one's going to go see it. I don't think that's the case, and I don't think that will be the case in future entries of Scream moving forward. So, was it worth bringing back the legacy characters? Eh, I enjoyed their time, but I didn't think they were necessary. Now, for the plot, how the movie unfolds and how it goes through the weaving story that is a Scream movie. It was solid. It, I liked it enough. I wouldn't say that it was spectacular. There are a lot of people out here saying that Scream 5 reinvents the wheel and it is going to blow your mind. It didn't. Was it fun? Was it a nice little romp? in the world of Woodsboro and seeing the Ghostface killer around doing its Ghostface thing and hearing Ghostface's voice? Yes, it accomplishes that. Are the kills brutal? Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. Are they as inventive? No, not as much. There's one that was like, Woo! Damn, there was one that was really good like that. But everything else, it's okay. It's it's a fun thing. Like I said, it's not, it's not mind blowing. At least it wasn't for me. I'll watch it again. And I'm sure there's more watches I need to do because, and this was another reason I kind of really liked this movie was the Easter eggs. There were tons of Easter eggs, but that is a video for another day. Now, here we go. Spoiler alert has been issued for you. We are talking about the killer killers, killers is, 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 is killer reveal for scream five. However many there are, however many there aren't, who it is, all that crap. I'm giving, the reason this is delayed is because I'm giving people a chance to get the hell out of here. Go, if you haven't seen the movie, go see the movie like this and then come back and we'll talk about it some more. Okay, this is your last chance. Let's talk about the killer, killer's killer reveal. This was a bullshit killer reveal and I hate to harp on it so bad. And I don't say that just because I pegged one of the killers. When I saw the trailer, when I saw the first trailer, you can go back and you can watch my video on that. I pegged Jack Quaid for being one of the killers. It just felt right. He felt like a Stu Mocker kind of character. He's tall, he's kind of gumpy, he's lanky. He has the same kind of look. It just felt right. And then when Dewey pegs him, he So we're just done with phrasing, right? That's not a thing anymore. He says, how long have you known this guy? Six months? And he just locks it in. I'm like, that felt too right. It did feel way too right. And then he goes in and he plays the, oh, I don't know what's going on. And the moment I knew that Jack Quaid was the killer was when Tara didn't have her inhaler. I was like, he took it. 
Of course he took it, and he doesn't want to go back to the hospital. Obvious. The moment I knew, well, actually, I first had a hint that Amber was one of the killers in the very first scene when they did the video of her. I'm like, this feels staged, which it probably was months beforehand, and it was probably Amber that attacked Tara. They could have had Richie go back and forth between Modesto and Woodsboro, but no, that was probably Amber at the very opening scene. But when I saw that it was Amber's house is Stu Mocker's house, that's when I was like, okay. Like, it all came together before it came together. And another little thing, and it was a quick little thing, quick blink if you miss it kind of thing, but I hate to say this because it's so stupid, but the OGs will know that when Jack Quaid, sorry, Richie, gets his arm sliced in the hospital, that's the exact type of slice that happens on Derek that conveniently misses all the stuff, like Dewey points out in Scream 2 to throw the scent off the fact that it could be Derek. It's the flip on that where it actually is trying to clear the killer but doesn't clear the killer. It all kind of comes together before it comes together, but not too far before it comes together. I really thought that the other one was going to be Dylan Minnette. But the reason that that reveal pisses me off is because Jack Quaid makes sense. He's a tall dude. He looks like Ghostface. The casting they did for Amber did not make sense for Ghostface. She is too small. And I'm not saying too small like, oh, she couldn't do the lifting and all this stuff. Like Saw had all those plot hole errors because it was just Amanda. And then they fixed it by bringing in, oh no, it was this dude that was helping her. No, Amber is too small of stature. You're going to tell me that Amber was the ghost face that sliced Richie and murdered Dewey. That was an inch taller than Dewey. Now I get it. The boots are thick. Sure. But she wasn't that tall. She was like two inches shorter than Nev Campbell. And I know that this is a nitpicky thing, but if you're going to have a movie like Scream, which is a total murder mystery, end up to have one of the shortest actors be one of the killers, it's not going to work. And the solution to that is you have everybody be kind of tall. Now I understand that that isn't really realistic because not everybody's tall, but you know what? I'm a short dude and that wouldn't bother me because I don't want to have hints as to who or who it isn't. I want it to be equal playing ground and I want it to be everybody's a suspect. That's the one of the greatest lines in the original Scream. Everybody's a suspect! Because everybody should be. And to have such a cheap throw off the scent idea of that's why she's short, like, if that's why they made her be one of the killers, because, oh, you're not going to think it's her, because she, she's shorter than, like, everybody. But Ghostface is as tall or taller than everybody. That doesn't make sense. It cheapens the reveal. So while I saw half of it way ahead of time, the other one was really dumb. And I think they could have done better. I, I, I honestly am waiting for a three-killer reveal in Scream. And yes they're going to keep these going. So, if it wasn't bluntly apparent, in terms of the killer reveal, no, this was not worth the wait. Now, despite that big rant I just went on, in terms of the killer reveal, does that mean that I hated this movie? No, I had a fair bit of fun with it. I enjoyed the vast majority of my time watching this movie. Am I going to watch it again? Yeah. Am I probably going to buy it? Yeah, probably. Because this was a fun little jaunt through because... This movie literally kept me on my toes the entire time. And they did it perfectly. That's exactly what you got to do. Because you have all these music cues that you learn from Scream. There, it's like, oh, and then it bring it down. The Dylan Minnette kill is perfect because you think he's not going to die. We're going to build it up because he just killed his mom. And not he, but Ghostface just killed his mom. So we're not going to have immediately another kill right after that. So they subvert the expectation of that by, they start to make you think, maybe you will, and then it fakes it out, and then maybe you will, and then it fakes it out, and maybe you will, and then it fakes it out. There's all these things that it gives you in that scene, but then it ultimately kills him. When you think all the tension is cut, it's, there's going to be this whole big scene where he's finally going to find his mom, and holy shit, this is crazy. He locks the door, and you're like, oh man, that sucks, someone else is going to notice it, he's going to be the new suspect, yada, 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 no neck this movie does a very good job of building tension 
And that's what you need in Scream movies. Everything needs to be heightened. Everything needs to be on its edge the entire time. You need to be questioning everybody. You need to be questioning everything. And until you see someone die, like die, 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 like stab in the throat, like on Wes, or shot in the head like Billy in the original, until you see that person die, everybody's a suspect. Even then, after the killer kill, after Sam goes ape shit and kills Richie, I wasn't convinced that she wasn't going to kill Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox. That Gail and Sydney weren't about to get the Billy Loomis Stabathon special. And I'm still not convinced. She very easily could be a hero turned villain in future entries. And I'm here for it. Now, to finally answer the question, was it worth the 10 years? I'd say it was. Not exactly because of this one. This one was good. I enjoyed this one. I enjoyed this one way more than three and more than four by a bit. But what I like about this one, and the reason this one feels worth the wait for me, is because I think that they have a very strong base that they could make further Scream movies based on, centered around Sam, the twins, the survivors. But what they need to do in the future entries, they need to lay, leave the legacy characters out of it. Boom, this man! No! They finally need to let Sydney go. She doesn't need to be the victim in all these. The reason that Laurie Strode is the victim through all of the Halloween movies, or at least the ones where the timeline fits for that, is because it's Michael Myers. Ghostface has been different people the entire series, over and over and over again. We can let Sydney go. We can let her go now. Let her go live with Mark and her, and her girls. Let Gail go. Let her go being grieving about Dewey. Let them go. Let's pass the torch as apt as that is for this movie because holy shit let's pass that torch and let this new cast take over because i think if you leave the past in the past and you look towards the future scream could keep going for quite a bit here with this new cast now what about you what did you think about scream 5 do you think it was worth the 10 years of wait do you want to see more screams i know there are diehards out there that are going to want to see scream regardless of how it is but I want to know about you. What do you think was worth seeing in this movie? And what was your favorite kill? I like talking about kills in these movies. Because this one actually has a lot, a lot, a lot of kind of the run in the mill. But also a lot of brutality. So hit the comments. Let me know. And if you want to keep talking horror, watch this video here. Or it'll be linked in the description below. Where we start talking my favorite horror franchise. And that is Halloween. Hope to see you over there. But until then, take care.